Hello, everyone. This is Paris Alford with the Daily Journal. I'm joined by former Mississippi State coach and Texas A&M coach Jackie Sherrill. Uh, Jackie, how you doing today, man? Doing good. How are you doing? Doing fine. You're looking good. One of the one of the things that is uh, most fun about Zoom is you see everybody's man cave. You see all those uh, <laughs> all the frames and uh, everything. And so I, I know you yeah. got some good memorabilia there. Well, um, I have a whole bunch in uh, uh, memorabilia, and my wife's on me all the time. You know, Peggy doesn't. If you walked in our house, she would not know that I coached the down. Uh, she <laughs> she has pictures of everything except uh, pictures of me in coaching. Oh, well, that's that, that's funny. But, uh, you know, the, the wives, that's kind of their domain, man. You kind of, you, you know, I, I get just a little bit of space and, and, I, and the rest of the decorating, that's, that's not me. Um, yes. I mentioned to you the other day when we were texting a little bit that uh, your press conference on a, on a regular Tuesday game week, uh, uh, you were kind of like uh, the forerunner of Mike Leach in the, sense, <laughs> in the sense that you would get off topic. And, and you would, you know, like I'm, I'm as a beat writer, I'm needing to hear if your quarterback's going to play this week. And the next thing I know, I'm hearing about Rice Stadium. But uh, on, on this particular day, you were talking about uh, college football and how we would all arrive at four 16 team super conferences. And uh, given the events of the week, uh, looks like uh, Texas and Oklahoma very well. Uh, could be soon joining the SEC. Uh, I just wanted to get your perspective on that. Why back in uh, the early 90s and, and I think even before, uh, why you thought we would we would reach this point in college football? Well, it's very simple. It's, it's derived by money. Everything is driven. Uh, and quite frankly, right now, you know, everybody is – has no idea why the Pac-12 does not have a great television league package and why they can't get the Pac-12 network. But it's very simple. Uh, if you look at the whole country and you look at the college football footprint, and when you say college football, you're talking about people that buy tickets, support the university, watch the games, and identify with that team so uh, in the pack and the pack 12 footprint the whole footprint there's only 14 to 17 percent in that population that are college football fans so if you're an advertiser and you your market is the college football fan are you going to put money in 14 percent to 17% penetration? Are you going to put money in 50 to 80% uh, penetration? So it's all driven by the dollar. And you come back to when you look at the SEC, the top five cities that are college football fans, I'm talking about that when advertisers are trying to get to that market, Birmingham's 85%. Uh, Atlanta's 41, Tampa, St. Pete's 39, and Houston and Dallas are 35 apiece. So five of the top cities in uh, all of college football are in the SEC. That's why the SEC network, that's why ESPN's contract with the SEC is private. No one has been able to get the dollar figure, total dollar figure, of the contract between the SEC and ESPN. So when you look at this, it comes down to where now, because, you know, it all started a long time ago. Uh, you know, name, image, and likeness, as we know it today, really started back in the late 70s. And that's when Oklahoma and Georgia sued the NCAA for proprietary rights, that we own those rights in which every university does. So when you look at the NCAA, 
and you see how much money they have taken away. Uh, let's just go back and, and say, you know, when you, you're talking about a billion dollar contract for the final four, if that money had been given to the universities, just think of how much further along all universities would have been. And so now, because the NCAA controlled that, they lost part of it and lost football in 19, the late 70s. And now they have lost football completely because the college football is bigger than it's ever been. The NIL is bigger, is the, the doors open. So is the NCAA, and this is my opinion, is the NCAA able to control? No. So what's happening is every conference and 16 teams in the Pac-12 is not a new deal. When A&M went to the SEC, Texas was trying to get A&M, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Colorado, Kansas, trying to get them to the Pac-12, which would have been the Pac-16. And the mistake that Texas made was, you know, saying that A&M was their little brother, that they would follow Texas. And if it hadn't been for Coach Stallings, uh, that probably would have happened. But Coach Stalin stood up and said, you know, we're not anybody's little brother. And so by doing that, then the SEC took note. The SEC came to A&M. And really, when you look at A&M to the SEC, A&M brought a lot more to the SEC than the SEC gave A&M. Because... The, the largest university, you know, they in Florida, they are a member of the AAU. There's only four, Missouri, Florida, Vanderbilt, Texas A&M. And then they have the largest endowment of anybody. So when you put all those together and then you look at the number of college football fans, you know, there's, there's two million plus college football fans that Texas A&M brought, but they also brought Texas, Dallas and Houston television market. So when you throw all those things in, and that's what a conference, when they invite somebody, that's the most important. What can they bring to the conference? And, you know, they Pac-12 at that time, Pac-10, they knew that Texas, if they brought A&M, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, everybody, then they would own the territory, the footprint from the West Coast to the Mississippi River. I know uh, it all comes back to money, uh, even right now, but uh, how much money do you think, and, and, and it's all speculation, because as you say, some of the figures haven't been reported, but how much money is Texas losing by not being part of the SEC? I mean, if Texas, we, we know what kind of stick Texas carries in the Big 12, but if it continued to just be Texas in the Big 12, you know, how much money is it not getting because it's not part of the SEC, in your opinion? Well, they'll have to give up their Texas network. Yeah. And that, and that network was $15 million a year. So they'll have to give that up if they join the Pac-12 or if they join the SEC. But in their minds, they know that the Big 12, because of the advertising, the footprint, and everything involved, that it, there's not anybody but Oklahoma in the Big 12 that's helping Texas financially. And... So Texas is so far now you have to give Texas credit because Texas is still the number one money making university in the country. They for many years, of course, not now, but for many years, 
they put money in the bank of 20 million plus every year of over what they spent. So all of a sudden now, because of their football program, you know, the dollars are not the same as they were. But the biggest reason is television. The television is not as big as it was once. So, you know, how does, how does Texas get back into the major picture? The only way Texas can get back into the major picture is either going to the Pac-12, the Big Ten, or the SEC. In my opinion, again, this is my opinion. I, I would say Texas has has talked to the Pac-12, the Big Ten, the ACC, and the SEC, trying to figure out which is their best deal, which league is their best deal. That's interesting. Um, aside from from money, let's look at some uh, some other aspects of this. Uh, is it a slam dunk that the SEC votes to accept Texas? We, we know that uh, Texas A&M uh, is not excited about this idea. Do you think they will come around and uh, there will be a unanimous vote? Or do you think that uh, there will be enough members uh, against Texas and Oklahoma to block this? Well, in my opinion, I mean, it, it comes back to how strong Commissioner Sankey is. If he can push it all the way down, then for him to have the, the first major super conference is a feather in his cap. So, you know, can he push? Now, don't tell me that 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 LSU, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Mississippi State won't Texas in their league. I mean, when you look at it right now, they can go in and they have been to start cherry picking recruits out of Texas because of selling the SEC. But if Texas has that selling point again, they will not go get the kids out of Texas. Texas will gobble those kids back up and control uh, those kids. So. You know, does LSU want to give up, you know, going into Texas and getting great players? So, you know, they're, you know, right now, Missouri and A&M, but is the dollar figure, this is something that ESPN will have to increase that dollars, that those dollars a lot more to get Texas and Oklahoma or to get any team in the SEC to say, we'll let you in. Now, if they do come in, if I was Alabama or Auburn, that means I go to the East. So if I go to the East, do I want to play Tennessee, Georgia, and Florida every year? Well, let's say that Jackie Sherrill was the AD and you were for a time, correct? Weren't you, uh, you were football coach and AD at A&M for a time. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So let's uh, say Jackie Sherrill was in the AD's meeting. Uh, what would have been more important for you in casting your vote? Would it have been the extra dollars that you know Texas and Oklahoma could bring into the league? Or would it have been the recruiting advantage for your coaches? I'm going to take the recruiting because <laughs> – Recruits makes that damn football coach a lot better. Interesting. Hey, we. it looks like on the outside looking in, Jackie, as we observe the Big 12 in Texas, that, uh, you know, Texas has this uh, unique relationship there and is, is used to getting its way and uh, sometimes doesn't really get along well with others. Uh, I believe they have their own uh, financial deal with the Big 12 and a bigger share and, and all that. Uh, what kind of fit uh, do you think Texas would be in the SEC? As you mentioned, the Longhorn Network goes away. Well, no, yeah, Here's, I learned this a long time ago. You know, when the old Southwest Conference, 
uh, when I was asking the conference commissioner, why do we have Rice? Why do we have uh, SMU? Why do we have, uh, when financially they do not add anything to the Southwest Conference? And his answer, he looked me right square in the eye and he said, Jackie, they're W's. They've earned the right to be here. Now, when you say that, because Texas, and if you ask Tom Osborne, uh, I can't speak for Tom, but you know the the word is that Nebraska told the SEC and especially Texas and DeLoss, if we don't share, we're gone. Well, the next year they didn't share, so Tom Osborne called the Big Big Ten to join the Big Ten. So Texas will have to give up their network. Texas will have to understand they are part of the league. They are not the league as they were in the Big 12 because Texas got most of the television dollar. Even though they may have earned more than anybody by being on, but if you're part of the league, you're part of the league regardless. Um, so you don't think it would be a unanimous vote here from the SEC? Is is that right? And I'm when I say unanimous, I'm I'm kind of uh, well. They uh, only need there only needs to be four votes to block it. Yeah. And you know, right now you've got A and M. No, you've got Missouri. Uh, unless there's just tons of money, and they have said this unless there is a ton of mo more money into their pocket, they're going to vote no. So again, LSU and, and Alabama, Miss, Mississippi, Arkansas, Mississippi State, you know, Mike has gotten, and even Mississippi have gotten quite some great players out of the state of Texas. But if Arkansas, if, if Texas is in the SEC, then their chances of getting those players are nil. Interesting. Um, if uh, you were at A&M right now, uh, what, uh, what would be your talking points uh, as Texas tries to maneuver into a conference where you've really kind of uh, made a name, the Aggies have made a name as the SEC in Texas, I mean, how, how would you be beating the drum right now? Well, you got to understand that the AD at Texas A&M is responsible for Texas A&M. He's not responsible for Texas. So his administrators, his board, board members, and all the Aggies, he has to do what's in the best favor of Texas A&M. So you know, I'm not the AD, so I can't speak uh, for the AD. But I would say that uh, the administration, the board members, uh, you know, the state of Texas is very political. And I would say there's a lot of politicians, a lot of legislators uh, that are very upset, and especially ones from Texas Tech and even Baylor. Uh, so they're, I'm sure the governor of Texas is getting a lot of phone calls. Um, the average Texas fan, Jackie, uh, do they think the SEC is overrated? Would, would they embrace this move? Or uh, do they think that uh, Texas should, Texas and Oklahoma should work hard to uh, save the Big 12? Well, I think Texas, you know, Texas is a great institution. You can't take that away from them. And Texas, you know, has been in the past. They're not right now. We're a great football program. Uh, so when you look at the state of now in Texas, is up there of the endowment are the most endowed universities in the country. There's only two public institutions in the top five, that's Texas, Texas A&M. 
So, you know, money wise, Texas is very deep pockets. So uh, Texas, their people probably feel, and this is my speculation, feel they belong in the PAC-10 because of the academics more than they belong in the SEC. You mean the Big Ten? Is that? Uh, no, they belong in the PAC-12 or the Big Ten. Okay. Yeah, more than they do the SEC because they are a AAU member. And academically, they, they dirt deserve the right because they have been very, very good academically. Um, what do you think uh, a 16 team SEC and all that political clout coming together? Uh, what does that mean to the NCAA? Well, it, it's not necessarily the SEC. This has been coming from a long time. This goes all the way back to Georgia and Oklahoma's lawsuit against the NCAA back in the late 70s. Uh, this has been coming little by little and now it's at the breaking point and where the NCAA has no power and I don't in my opinion the NCAA will not be here much longer uh, you know when you, the NCAA started it started with the small schools so it's going to go back and govern the smaller schools and, and, and parents, uh, you know, there's, there's an engineering company in Tupelo in Jackson, but are they Exxon mobile? Are they Gulf? I mean, no, and they never will be. And so that are expo exploring engineering companies that also could be, you know, the wool company, there's, so there's no way that Troy is going to be Alabama or Auburn. There's no way other schools that Rice, for example, will be Texas or Texas A&M. It won't happen. So I've been saying this for a long time. The power five are the power five. All the other institutions are the next, as we say, the non-power five. They should have their own national championship. They, they should be doing things because if you get a kid and say, I want a national championship, they don't ask you which league you want it in. They just know that you want a national championship. Yeah. So it would, it would enhance them. It would enhance their financials. Uh, and financially, if they had their own national championship. Do you think, uh, absent the NCAA, that uh, the Power Fives, the super conferences, however this shapes out, uh, could these conferences uh, police themselves? Uh, what, what do you think that would look like? Well, well that's the wrong term, police. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the better term is could they join together and be uh, mutually agreeing on certain things. Now, what we don't understand and what you got to put in this is now every state has their own NIL law or bylaws. So every state, they're, they're, how they handle the NIL, how do they handle college athletics, that door's open. So, Eventually, the Power Five will get together. They will have their own bylaws, but it won't be two inch, three inch thick NCAA manual. It'll be very, very simple that they all can live with. 